You know I'm a big believer in healthy eating, especially the idea of organic and natural foods as a long-term theme that you can make money year after year with if you play it correctly. It's why I wrote about it and Get Rich Carefully. But over the winter, it started to seem like maybe it wasn't a safe bet on the organic and natural supermarket stocks anymore. Racked by disappointing numbers and worries about increased competition, group got hammered relentlessly. However, perhaps it's too soon to write off these organic grocery chains. Take Sprouts Farmers Market. Here's a stock that came public at $18 a share. Tremendous, tremendous fanfare last July. Roared 123% higher on its first day of trading, ultimately climbing as high as $49 before it came falling back to earth. The problem? When Sprouts reported its first quarter as publicly traded company back in November, the numbers were good, not good enough to justify the sky-high valuation. Then later that month, the company announced a 20 million share secondary offering, putting even more pressure on the stock. That's around when people started giving up on the organic and natural supermarket segment. I think they gave up too soon. Because when Sprouts reported again on February 27th, the company blew the numbers away, delivering a one-cent earnings beat off of a, a six-cent basis, higher than expected revenues, 27% year-over-year. Get this, 13.8% same-store sales, much better than 10.5% the analysts were looking for, and by far the best performer in the group. Since then, the stock's been rebounding nicely. They'll pull back today. Meanwhile, Sprouts is a powerful regional and national growth story, over 170 stores in just nine states. Management thinks it can only expand to 1,200 stores. That's appealing if the organic and natural competition isn't as deadly as it seemed not that long ago. So let's take a closer look with Doug Sanders. He's the president and CEO of Sprouts Farmers Market. Hear more about this amazing company and its prospects. Mr. Sanders, welcome to Mad Money. How are you, sir? Hey, Mark. Have a seat. Well, I've got to tell you, uh, no one did 13% comps except for you. I mean, I went over every, before you came out, I said, I kept trying to find someone. And, you know, Chipotle had nine. That was right. our standard. How can you have 13% in an environment where no one is doing double digits? Well, obviously, you're seeing the growth in natural and organic, and that's, you know, if, if the health and wellness trend is really reshaping the, the landscape of the food industry, and that's driving a lot of the growth in health and wellness and the tailwinds in our sector. But really what you're seeing is the strength of our model. You know, our model is really geared based on health and value right. uh, to attract not just the natural lifestyle cu customer, but the everyday supermarket customer who's wanting to eat healthier but just doesn't quite know where to start and really is under the perception that eating healthier is too expensive. But look, it's true. I mean, we all accept the fact if you're going to be natural or organic, it's going to cost much more than if you just buy processed food. Somehow, you, you're promotional which in a good way, obviously, right. I mean, meaning right. flyers, mm -hmm. your prices are reasonable. It's not supposed to be able to happen. Well, I think it's, it's more than that. I mean, when you look at the Sprouts experience, it's all about the in-store experience, if you will. So it's more than just stacking cans on a shelf when it comes to natural foods. You really need to understand the product and have that customer engagement so you can actually teach them how to eat healthier and understand the benefits of the products they're buying. No, okay, let's take this because this is not something I would necessarily eat. The chia, quinoa, and flax. It's but phenomenal I'm, salsa, by but, the way. The salsa. <laughs> but when I say not, not necessarily eat, except for now, I would. In the last two years, we know these are not long, no longer buzzwords. Mm -hmm. How much does this cost versus, say, uh, a typical salsa that we would buy, you know, the, a name brand, a Frito-Lay, you know, kind of a salsa? You know, surprisingly, it's not significantly more. How but, can that be? But what you're I think what you're seeing is, is the consumer is – is really looking for more out of their food. They're looking not not just looking for health and value, right. but they're looking for attributes like natural and organic and mm -hmm. gluten free and non GMO. And I think what you're seeing is, is is the today's customer is really not just about the food, but really expecting more from their food and even more from their food retailer. Okay, now you are very successful in California, 74 stores. You're now moving to the southeast. What's been the reception? It's been tremendous. Obviously, our first store opens in the southeast, and we've done a lot of homework in the mm -hmm. southeast, and a lot of the same competitors that we've competed with for years, right. but some new players. Right. But what we really took away from it was there was a real demand for help for natural foods and healthy foods at prices that the everyday consumer could afford. Now, you, you talk about the uh, what happened in Phoenix. There's a great test case here because mm -hmm. Whole Foods opened to 2002, Walmart, Trader Joe's, Costco, uh, Fry's, Mart. It just doesn't seem that you are dented at all by right. whoever comes in. So is that, again, because of the differentiated model? It is. Obviously, the strength of our model is the broad appeal of our right. model. When we right. go to market with, with, with fresh produce at, at those tremendous prices that are 25 to 35, 30 percent below the supermarkets, that opens that broad spectrum and allows us to compete not just in the natural food space but in the broader supermarket space. Well, now, I have to presume that all of this stuff, how do you contract with the, with the companies to be able to have it so that you've been able to be competitive? What is your relationship with farmers? From, from the produce standpoint, we obviously decentralize our, our produce right. buying because we, remember we, we source quality control and distribute all the produce we sell. Right. So we have really strong relationships with, with growers from a local, local, from local regional, mm -hmm. national, and international perspective that allows us to, to you know, source the amount of produce, produce we need to support the, uh, the volume that we do. Now, I mean, you've been saying that you make the healthy source available, but persistent, 
persistent shift in shopping behaviors. Mm -hmm. Is that again, they don't want the can, they don't want the, they don't want the, preserve, they don't want the food chain. They, right. I mean, that's what it is. It's a revulsion against the food Absolutely. chain. And well, if I go to your stores, will everything be, is everything natural or organic? Not everything we sell is natural and organic. Okay. It's probably about 85 to 90 percent. Wow. That's incredible. Well, I got to tell you, I mean, I saw the numbers and I mean, the people in the industry I, were all, they're all head scratched because it is, it, it is just remarkable that you did the number with Trader Joe's, with Whole Foods, with everybody. And it just hasn't mattered, right? When, when the more players, you're still able to do these numbers. Well, I mean, when you look at the markets we compete in today, we compete in some of the most competitive yeah. markets in the country and with some of the best retailers in the country. So we know what it means to compete, and we compete every single day. So moving into new markets across the country, we've been able to, uh, to uh, obviously see some of the same competitors and compete with new competitors. But whether the strength of the model is, as you see the consumer really shifting towards, you know, away from pro the processed foods right. and more, more towards for fresh, natural, and organic, you're seeing that not just our success, not just in highly concentrated markets, like California and mm -hmm. Colorado, but really in, in markets you wouldn't necessarily consider healthy, you know, in the right. central part of the country. Right, that's what I think is really incredible. So congratulations on an amazing number. Thank you very much. It's unbelievable. Thank that's you very Doug much. Sanders, President and CEO of Sprouts Farmers Market. You've got to go through the presentations. You've got to understand it's a very expensive stock, but it did have the best comparable store sales of any company I follow in the whole country. Stable Kramer.